In this video, we're going to discuss the seven different types of tax-free reorganizations that are listed under Section 368 of the U.S. Tax Code. So let's start with a Type A reorganization. First off, it's called Type A because it's under Section 368A1A. And a Type B reorganization would be Section 368A1B and so forth. So type A is an acquisitive reorganization. But what does that mean for it be acquisitive? Well, basically acquisitive means that you've got so the acquiring corporation here, let's say that's you, and then you've got a target corporation that you want to acquire. So what you're going to do is you're going to transfer, you're going to transfer some assets and some of your voting stock, some voting stock in exchange for the target's stock, right? So you're going to exchange that for the target stock. Now, this is in contrast to a divisive, so you'll hear the term divisive reorganization, where the acquiring firm will actually end up creating a second corporation and then transferring some assets to the second corporation and then you'll send some stock back to the acquiring corporation and so forth, which we will talk about. Now, getting back to the acquisitive organ reorganization, which is type A, we've got assets and voting stock being given to the target in exchange for the target stock. And this is going to qualify as a tax-free reorganization if the following requirements are met. So the voting stock that is being given to the target has to be at least 40% of the consideration being given. What is consideration? Consideration is just what you're giving to the target, right? You're giving assets and stock. So 60% could be cash, it could be whatever, but at least 40% has to be voting stock. So that's pretty flexible and, and you'll see as we talk about the different types of reorganizations. However, the one drawback to the type A is that it has to comply with the state's merger and consolidation laws. That could be an issue because it means you're going to probably need approval from the shareholders for the deal to go through. Another drawback to type A is that you're going to end up having to acquire all of the liabilities of the target, which could be a real issue if there are contingent liabilities outstanding. Maybe the target was involved with asbestos production or something at some point in the past. So that's type A, and it's sometimes referred to as an asset for stock acquisition, although bear in mind you still have to give at least 40% of the consideration as voting stock. Now type C a type C reorganization is also called assets for stock, and it's also acquisitive, but there are some differences. So you don't need to follow the state merger and consolidation laws. So basically that means you might not need uh, shareholder approval. You don't need to get that. However, it's not as flexible when it comes to the consideration being given. And so voting stock has to be at least 80% of the consideration that's being given. So if you're giving $100 million of consideration to this target to get their stock, then $80 million of that better be voting stock. Otherwise, it's not going to qualify as type C. Another qualification of type C is you have to acquire substantially all of the target's assets. And so you might be wondering, what does it mean, substantially all? What does that even, what does that even mean? So it's been defined as at least 70% of the fair market value of the gross assets of the target and at least 90% of the fair market value of the net assets of the target. The good news is that you only have to acquire the liabilities that are specified in the agreement. Now, a type B reorganization differs from both uh, A and C because it's a stock for stock reorganization. It's still acquisitive, but what is happening is basically you as the acquirer are giving 100% of the voting stock is all the consideration. You're not giving cash, you're not giving property, you are giving your own voting stock in exchange for the stock of the target, right? So you take some, take some of your stock, you give it to the target, and then the target gives you their stock. And now you don't need shareholder approval, but you have to have at least 80% of the control of the target immediately afterwards. Now, that 80%, you could get that over time. It's, it's called creeping acquisitions and so forth. And so, but when it's all said and done, you have to have at least 80% of control immediately afterwards. And the good news is, even though there's a strict requirement about having to do 100% voting stock, you do not have to assume the target's liabilities. Now, a type D reorganization can be either acquisitive or divisive, and it can be really complicated because you have spin-offs, you have split-offs, you have split-ups, and I'll make a separate video on this, but just to give you an idea, uh, let's say that you, you have your company here, and let's uh, say it's called Smith, Smith Corporation, 
and you uh, I don't know you you make furniture and then you happen to have some people in the in the office that are really good at trading derivatives and so you say hey these people are trading derivatives they're making money but this is really risky it's a lot more risky than making furniture so I'm gonna spin this off so I'm gonna spin this off and we'll call that high risk enterprises and so I'm gonna transfer some assets to this spin off and then I'm gonna get some stock uh, back. So we'll talk about that more to, to come. There's a lot of different ways it can be done, but that's a type D reorganization. Now type G, type G can also be acquisitive or divisive, but type G is ba basically gonna happen uh, through bankruptcy court. And what'll happen is that the way it could be acquisitive or divisive is that what you could have is you could have a situation where the judge says, okay, look, so let's say you're Smith here and you, you went bankrupt and, and you know there's trouble. And so the judge, the bankruptcy judge says, look, I could just, they could force you to say, okay, well now you have to give your assets uh, to, directly to your creditors, right? You have to give your assets to your creditors and all the other claimants in bankruptcy, or, or, and this is where it could be divisive potentially, they said, well, look, actually what we're gonna do, we're gonna have you uh, create a second corporation. This will be New Corp, and you're gonna transfer some of your assets from Smith to New Corp, and then the creditors are going to be able to get New Corp and so forth. And we'll talk about that more. It's a lot more complicated than I just laid out, but that typically it's, it's happening, type G is happening through bankruptcy. Type E type of reorganization is actually called commonly a recapitalization because what you're really doing, not so much, you know, you're not acquiring a corporation or something like that. It's neither acquisitive nor divisive. Uh, what you're doing is you're saying maybe you have a lot of outstanding bonds and you say, you know what? I don't really want to be capitalized a lot with debt. We've got a lot of debt here at the corporation as it is. So what we're going to do, we've got the, the bondholders have agreed uh, that we're gonna give them some preferred stock or we're gonna give them some voting stock or something like that in exchange for these bonds. So you're going, you could give stock for stock, you could have a bonds for stock, you could have bonds for bonds. You know, there's several different ways it can go, but basically, you know, you're not acquiring a new company, and so you're basically just recapitalizing the firm. Now type F, similar to type E, is, is not acquisitive nor divisive. You're not going out and, and acquiring some other firm or something. It's actually, what you're doing is you're, you're changing the corporation's name or the place of incorporation or, or something like that. So it's not quite as exciting as the other ones, but it does uh, qualify as a tax-free reorganization. And just one other thing I should mention is that when we get to type D, so it's type, section 368, actually governs all of this but but certain like for example type d can also be governed under section 355 and, and we'll talk about that when we in the video on type d reorganizations